With a second straight SEC regular season title in the bag, the Aggies traveled to Fayetteville, Arkansas for the SEC tournament. The postseason had arrived. More hardware was out there for the taking. I knew it was going to be challenging. Vanderbilt's a really good team. You know, they have some really good wins this year, especially early in the year. They made the national indoors beat NC State, who's a top five team. But it was a tough match, and I knew it was going to be tough because they're a good team. And um, we've actually played, that's the fifth time we've played them in the last two seasons. We've played Vanderbilt, so they've seen us a lot. We've seen them a lot, and they always bring their give it their all. So, um, yeah, we're lucky to scrape through. Then the next day we played Florida. We won the doubles point, and... We were feeling confident going into singles. Everyone was more fired up, I thought, against Florida. And it was close for a minute, but everyone ended up pulling it out. I think we definitely felt a little bit more confident. There was still like some kind of like tension, like nerves out there. Obviously, Florida is like a feisty team, and we knew they were going to fight. But it was kind of eye-opening for us because we were like, okay, like all these teams, like they're the underdogs. Like we're already like on top. And so like they're going to do everything and anything to beat us. And obviously, like we came out beating them, but it was still kind of like scary, like thinking like, okay, like this could have gone the other way like so easily. So we were super excited heading in to the finals. And we we're like, okay, we're playing Georgia. We expected to play Georgia in the finals. They're also a really great team in the SEC. And they have a lot of good players. They're historically a very, very good team. They've won it a lot. But I think it's just like the girls get excited to play the big matches. You know, they know it was a top five matchup. The last time we played them, it was an epic encounter. You know, I think actually some of the girls are friends with some of the Georgia girls and things like that. So it's not really uh, a huge rivalry, like player to player so much as it is, I think a mutual respect and um, just wanting to play the best teams. Here we gotta be really aggressive and go out and take it. Okay, we can't just sit around waiting for it to happen. We gotta go take it. Let's be real decisive here in the single, y'all, okay? That's a tough one out there. You know, I haven't had to give this speech much. That we, we haven't lost much in the last two years. So, you, you know, I know it hurts. I know we all came here uh, to win the whole thing. And, you know, it's number two against number three out there. And it's just, it's who's playing the, the bigger points better uh, than the others. And uh, Georgia just played the bigger points a bit better uh, than we did. And, you know, it's these big matches, these big matches experience that uh, you know, we got to get stronger, some of us there. And uh, no team works harder uh, than we do. We do so many of the right things on the physical side of it, but that mental side of it, you know, you only get so many opportunities to play these big stage matches, and that's just something that we're going to have to get a little bit stronger at, especially the the, the younger ones. Uh, we haven't been in this situation all that much, and, uh, you know, right around the corner, we got the, the national tournament that's going to start uh, soon, and, uh, you know, you get in the later stages of the tournament, uh, you start feeling those nerves and the stress and, and all those things. Those are things you can't in the practices, but we've got to find a better better mindset than we're in. I know that's been kind of my big uh, go-to message uh, this season is recovering between the points, breathing between the points, the routine between, between the points. You know, we've got to get some rest now. We've got to try and find ways to get better because our goals are still in front of us, right? We want to win it all. You know, if we, if we need to take this loss to learn some lessons and get better so we can lift the trophy next month, you know, I, I would take that. Yeah, I would take that. So make sure that 
losing, you see losing is learning. Um, we can't get too down on ourselves and feel too sorry for ourselves. We're going to take some time to rest and we're going to get back on the court and do everything we can, not just for yourselves, but especially for the older girls. This is their last shot, but I'm proud of you guys. Everyone always tries their hardest. That's what it's about. And we're going to make sure we're being smart and doing everything we can in our power. All right, let's get a good let's yell right guys. One, two, three, five. Hello and welcome to the 2023 Division I Women's Tennis Selection Show. We will not have to wait long to find out as first round matches are coming up this weekend. We're down to four more schools to round out this bracket. One of those is SMU in for the ninth time in program history. It's an all-Texas showdown in that first round as SMU will take on Baylor. The Bears are 16-3. and Quinnipiac is in thanks to their second consecutive Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference crown. The Bobcats have also won nine straight MAC tournament titles, playing on the home courts of two seed Texas A&M. The 2013 national runner-up Texas A&M is in the championships for the 28th time in program history. So first of all, you said you kind of guessed the field a little bit. So what do you like about what you see and what are some challenges from the teams you might face? Yeah, I kind of guessed the field for the most part. I wasn't quite sure about the first round, but I had a good feeling they would send SMU and Baylor here. But uh, yeah, I don't know much about Quinnipiac. I think I pronounced it right. Uh, Coach Saba and I will do a little research on them. And uh, yeah, you never want to look past anyone, but we, we are quite familiar with Baylor and SMU. If we're fortunate enough to get past our first round, uh, we'll face a familiar foe on the, on the second day. I think the Quinnipiac was a great first round match to kind of get away from a few of the nerves. We had a couple freshmen that was their first NCAA tournament and kind of a great way to, to feel the presence of the NCAA tournament. And uh, I was really uh, pleased with uh, playing a strong team in Baylor. Uh, they're one of the better teams in the Big 12. We've had some big matches with them over the years. It just kind of has a different feel when you're playing one of your in-state rivals and uh, we had a great crowd out uh, with our rich history of, of battling with Baylor through the years. Uh, it really had a, a great feel of the NCAA tournament and I was very pleased with how we performed, how we kind of handled the nerves, how we handled the big stage and yeah it was an excellent excellent second round match there for us. Making the round of 16 four years in a row, it's not easy and last year we, we were able to take it one step further and I'm kind of hoping we can take it even one more or two more or maybe even three more steps forward. I think we definitely had like a lot of confidence going into the last two matches, but it's definitely like building because now we just need like one more final push to get to the Elite Eight in Orlando. And it's definitely like now it's gonna be tougher and tougher matches. Every year we're able to build off of this confidence and the team's able to see what we're capable of achieving and we'll just see how long we can like ride this wave. After the Aggies topped Tennessee, they were among the elite again. For the second straight year, they'd advanced to College Tennis's final stop. This time, the destination was Orlando, Florida, and Stanford awaited in the Elite Eight round.
go, hey, we'll make this quick. You know, this isn't the speech any coach likes to deliver. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, what an amazing season we've had. I'm so, so proud of you all. Uh, I know it stings. And we've all put so much work into it. And, you know, other than the person, other than the team that wins the national title, uh, everyone leaves pretty devastated and heartbroken, huh? But, uh, you, you know, there's so much to be proud of this season. Uh, you know, I guess it, it hurts. You know, we haven't lost a, a regular season match in two years. The only matches we've lost in the last two years have been all championship matches. And, uh, you, you know, at the end of the day, Stanford just consistently played the big points uh, better than we did uh, in the doubles and in the singles. But, uh, you, know, you know, it sucks. This hurts to lose. Uh, nobody wants to lose a tennis match, and we just got to make sure we're doing everything within our power uh, going forward because we want to we want to win it all huh? and that we had our chances this season and you know at the end of the day Stanford just played a better match uh, than we did and, and they were just they were just champions on, on the big points there but uh, what an amazing season we've had uh, I'm super proud of y'all uh, I know we're all uh, just feel awful and heartbroken but uh, we'll, we'll get over it huh? what so many things we had to be proud of huh? made two consecutive Elite Eights. Uh, we've gone uh, undefeated in regular season two straight years now. Our only losses have been the in championship matches uh, to the best teams in, in the nation. So we just have to continue uh, to put ourselves in those uh, situations there and uh, we've won our share of titles but to get our ultimate goal uh, we just need to continue to uh, keep doing what we're doing and putting ourselves in the right situation. We've had some great individual meetings at the end of the season with our girls just to kind of find every ounce that we can to get better from maybe footwork to conditioning to working on our minds a little bit. And then uh, I think there's going to be some great leadership uh, going forward uh, from Mary Stoyana. Uh, she finished the season just number two in the nation in singles, uh, All-American in singles and doubles. And that's truly remarkable and in a lot of ways I think Mary will step up her leadership role even more. I think a lot of stuff can be done behind the scenes in the locker rooms and we're looking for not only Mary but you know, some of the other ones that are now upperclassmen. Just that team leadership can go such a long ways not just having the coaches do it but having the players holding each other to a high standard holding them accountable and our ultimate goal is to continue doing what we're doing, but our ultimate goal is to win a national title here.